All right, we're sharing your screen there, Walden. Can you uh, you want to pull yours down just a little bit? Me? Uh, yeah. Is it is it centered there? Uh, as far as I can see, it is. I okay. I can't. I I can't do anything different. I guess than okay. what it is. All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Dave Hatton. I am the uh, a financial consultant with First Midwest Financial Network, and today we are going. We are joined by uh, Tim Fee and Waldine Wall of Allianz Life. Uh, Waldine is with the Advanced Planning Team at Allianz, and um, I get a lot of questions on um, Roth IRAs and, and including Roth conversions and whether or not people should. Uh, convert their traditional IRAs over to Roth IRAs. And I will tell you, it's a very complicated question. There are a lot of variables in that. Um, what your current tax rates are, what you believe your future tax rates will be, how close are you to retirement? Again, just a lot of variables with that. And uh, so when I was offered the opportunity to, have, to, be, to, to talk to Waldine today, I jumped on the opportunity and uh, he's going to share with us some uh, some Roth conversions and as how it can uh, really enhance your uh, retirement. Um, last thing I'm, before I turn it over, Waldine, um, just uh, there's a slide there that you see that says first minute that uh, the products we talk about are not are not FDIC insured. They're not deposited in the bank, not guaranteed by the bank, and subject to investment risk. We're not going to talk about any products today. We're going to talk about IRAs and IRAs are just a box. You can put anything you want to in there. What we're looking at more than anything else today are going to be the tax strategies. Finally, if you have any questions, type them into the Q&A box or into the chat box. And uh, uh, we're, this is a fairly technical or can be a fairly technical presentation. So if you have any questions, feel free to type them in. We will get to them at the end of the presentation. Okay. With any further ado, uh, Waldy. All right. Thanks so much, Dave. Um, it's great to be with you. We are going to talk about Roth conversions today. <clears throat> and what I'd like to do is talk uh, about some of the issues that most uh, folks have with Roth conversions. And so through that, we'll talk a, a little bit about exactly how you can think about it in terms of, you know, whether it might be appropriate for you, at least to some extent. We'll also talk about some examples as to why a person might want to consider Roth IRA conversions. So on we go. Um, this is a picture of my backyard. Not really. I'm in Minneapolis, so we've got none of that here. Um, so we're not giving any tax advice here. You have got to work with your financial professional before you implement strategies that trigger tax or um, alter your current trajectory. And Roth conversion is one of those, but the idea is to actually end up with more of your own money. So we're not simply tr trying to save tax. We're trying to help you end up with more of your own money if the situation is right. So the whole premise here is if approached correctly, Roth conversion can really be an, a very effective strategy. And I'm going to say this, <clears throat> that I think most people will encounter situations where a Roth conversion could help. The key is spotting those situations, and the key is acting on those situations when they occur. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about just a couple of the basics. Um, we're going to talk about um, some of these problems with the IRA owner, the surviving spouse, and the beneficiaries. So basics. Um, let me just say this, a Roth conversion happens when you move money from a tax deferred retirement plan. So usually that's pre-tax money going in, right? And the growth has not been taxed. And then what's going to happen when you take the money out, you'll pay tax on everything. So a Roth conversion is when you take some of that money and you move it into a type of an IRA that has tax-free growth. All the growth from the point that you put the money in until it comes out is tax-free. 
Now, the hook on this or the difficulty is that when you make the switch, when you move money from your pre-tax IRA to a Roth IRA, the money you move to the Roth is income taxable, right? And so um, that's a problem because who wants to pay tax when they could just let the account defer longer, even though at some point they're gonna have to pay tax on more money, right? If you're like me and I'm not a youngster anymore, uh, I grew up hearing, you know, defer, 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 always defer, never ever pay tax before you have to. And the truth is that used to actually be true almost all of the time. However, we did not have the kind of money that we have in these retirement plans then. So all of this at some point has to come out and will be taxable at the time. The other situation that we have right now is that, and I think personally, I think this is the, this situation is going to be with us for a long time. Uh, we are tax hungry, right? We've been spending just a gob of money in the last year fighting the coronavirus and um, other things. And there are real needs for revenue out there. And so tax taxes are probably going up. Now, I don't know if they're going up on everybody. I don't know exactly how that's going to work out. We never do until it actually happens. But here's a statement that I'd like to make. It's easy to think that deferral is always better if there's enough time, but that's not always the case. Now it is, for some people, and it is for many people much of the time. The key is to spot those situations where Roth conversion can help. So I'm going to do the math on Roth conversion here. I'm gonna tell you what considerations are critical. So I'm trying to simplify this, right? So just to kind of cut to the end of this, there are only two issues that are of big concern when you think about Roth conversion. And these two issues are, what is my tax rate now? And at what rate will the money be taxed at later if I don't do a conversion, right? Because all of this money has to be taxed. It's not like capital assets that get a stepped up basis, right? All of this money is coming out at some point or another, and it's going to be taxed. The question is, what is my tax rate now versus what is the tax rate later on that money when it comes out? So that may not even be for me. That may be for a surviving spouse. That may be for children that inherit the retirement plan. Those are the critical issues. So let's say we have someone with a small IRA, $10,000 IRA. And they're thinking about converting that. And, they, and, and they're in a 12% tax bracket now. That's their highest tax rate now. We've done a little pencil pushing. And we think that at some point down the road, it's going to be higher. Now, we're just going to use 24% here. These are two tax brackets that we currently have, right? If this person doesn't do a Roth conversion, so that we just keep the $10,000 in the IRA and lean on deferral 10 years from now at 5% per year, that $10,000 is going to be worth $16,289. If the money comes out at that point and we lose 24% of it, we'll have $12,380 left, right? It's not rocket science. It's just 16,289 minus 24% leaves us with 12,380. Now, if we do the conversion, we're going to lose 12% now, right? So I'm trying to be really transparent about this. And I'm going, to, I'm saying that we'll only have $8,800 in the Roth IRA account. Now, it goes without saying it would be nice to pay the tax 
from a savings account. So we had the full $10,000 in the Roth account. But I want to be transparent. If you're over 59 and a half, you can pay the tax from the IRA without an additional 10% penalty. And so we are just gonna illustrate it this way. I have only $8,800. 10 years from now, this will be worth 14,334, right? But the tax has already been paid. This is a Roth IRA. So this comes out without tax. So we're almost $2,000 ahead of not doing a conversion. That's almost 16% more. Now, here's what I'm saying, right? Just to be clear, it was better to pay the tax today than pay it 10 years from now at a higher tax rate. I have 16% more money. And the reason I'm stressing this is because nobody likes to pay the tax today. That's always the argument. But when it comes to Roth, this is how it works. So you could pay the tax today, even though no one likes to do it, we're going to end up putting more money in the pocket because of the way this works. Now, some people will say, well, okay, so that's the example of the 12% rate with the 24% rate. Um, is that, I mean, that's not the only situation out there, right? So what I did is I put together this table that shows you how much money, all things considered, you could, you could make, how much you could be ahead by doing a conversion. So for example, again, here is 12% uh, marginal tax rate today, 24% tomorrow. Well, Dean. Um, yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Um, I don't think the slides are coming across. We still have just the Roth IRA conversion uh, slide up there. It, are, no. Is that not? No, because I'm sharing my screen and it's working working perfectly. Tim, are you out there? Are you seeing the same thing? Yeah, I am. It looks like a preview screen. Um, yeah. Wow. Okay, yeah. what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to share my screen again. Let's see. That's crazy. I, I don't know. I've never had this happen before. Okay. Share my screen. Huh. Better. Yeah, there we go. Is that better? Much. Yes, thank you. So, yeah, if it happens again, let me know. I, I don't have an explanation. All right. Did, the, did this one work okay? Why don't you cover that real quick if you could? Okay, so $10,000 uh, Roth conversion, possibly. Today, we're in a 12% bracket. Tomorrow, we'll be at a higher percent or a higher bracket. We're going to just assume 24%. If I don't do the conversion 10 years from now, I'll have 16289 in the IRA. At, at 10 years later, I have to that money has to come out. I'm going to lose 24% of it. So I have 12,380. If I did do the conversion, I'd have, I'd lose 12% right now. So I'd have only $8,800 to start with, but 10 years from now, I'd have 14,334 and that would be a tax free. And so I have nine, at almost $2,000 more, almost 16% more. And so this chart shows different tax rates. And you can see that everything down here is where you want to be. Everything up here is like, okay, no, Roth conversion isn't a good idea. So again, if the tax rate today is at 12% and the tax rate tomorrow is at 24%, here's your 16% gain by doing a Roth conversion. Now, let me, if you're, if you're ready for a little stress in your thinking, let me share something else. You see all these zeros here? 
right? So if I'm in a 12% tax rate today and a 12% tax rate tomorrow, Roth conversion doesn't do me any good, right? But here's a critically important thing to understand. It doesn't hurt me. It doesn't hurt me. If I'm in a 22% bracket today and I think I'll be in a 22% bracket 20 years from now, Roth conversion today won't help me, but it won't hurt me. So here's a thought on Roth conversion. This is, this is my approach anyway. If I'm going into retirement and I have a million dollars in retirement plan money or a million and a half dollars, whatever number you want, and I'm sitting down with Dave and I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, my tax rate is probably not going to change. I may want to do Roth conversion anyway. Because think about it. I have a million dollars of taxable income just waiting in the wings. I can move some of that out of there and not hurt myself rather than just leave it in there waiting for a tax problem. So we're seeing more and more and more people consider Roth conversion as they move uh, into retirement because often what happens then is incomes go down a bit, right? You're not, you don't have to earn the money that you're current, currently saving for retirement because you're in retirement. You don't have to pay the FICA tax on your earnings because you don't have any, any, any more earned income. You just have IRA income and social security and so forth. And maybe you have your house paid off. And so, so the amount of income you need goes down. Often the tax rate goes down. Now is prime time for Roth conversion. The other big time that we see Roth con conversion or contributions happen is when folks are young and they're just getting into the workforce. They're kind of cutting their teeth. Maybe they are at the lowest tax rate they'll ever be at. My daughter is in that situation. 100% of her IR, our 401k money is going into the Roth account. As her income goes up, she'll rethink that. All right. I find this a very helpful chart. Now, this is the situation that we're in today. If you're 65 or older, you can absorb almost $48,000 without leaving the 10% tax bracket. So you can absorb over $47,000 before moving into the 12% bracket, over $108,000 before moving into the 22% bracket, and over twenty, over two hundred thousand dollars before moving into the twenty-four percent bracket. So, if you have a large IRA out there and you're in retirement, and you bring your tax return into Dave, and he looks at it and he says, "You know what? You're thirty thousand dollars under the top of the twenty of the twelve percent tax bracket. Maybe you should simply do a thirty thousand dollar Roth conversion, right?" You, you could convert $30,000 without moving into the 22% tax bracket. That's a very simple approach, but that's a very good approach, approach a lot of people take to figure out, well, exactly how much should I convert? Now, I want to just show you, these are the Medicare premiums, right? And I'm setting you up here. When you go into retirement, age 65, you have, there are six levels of Medicare Part B premiums, and those are all based on adjusted gross income. So if you're married filing joint and your adjusted gross income is over $176,000, then you pay a higher premium, right? And the more money you make, the bigger that premium gets. The reason I'm showing you this is because if you have a large IRA, IRA, and you're able to defer this a long time and, until you maybe have to take out RMDs, as those RMD amounts grow, not only could your tax burden go up, but your Medicare premiums can go up too. So there are other costs connected to an increasing adjusted gross income. It's not just tax. So I'm gonna talk about three scenarios 
where we are seeing our Roth conversions, three tax problems as people move into retirement. Number one, the original IRA owner, having done well, is just looking to defer as long as possible. Now, again, I, I'm, I hear you here. That used to be tax planning 101. Never ever pay tax before you have to. The problem is we didn't have these large, large IRA accounts and we didn't have you know, the, the, the real possibility of tax rates you know, going up here. So what I've illustrated here, someone going into retirement, 65 doesn't need to pull money out of the IRAs right now. In fact, is longing to defer as long as possible. So here we have a million dollar IRA, million and a half dollar IRA, a two million dollar IRA. If you have a, if you have two million dollars in retirement plan money, and you're going into retirement at 65, your first RMD is going to be over a hundred and ten thousand dollars. So that's additional income coming into your situation on top of everything else. By the time you hit 82, it's almost $184,000. And this is happening every single year, right? If you make it to 92, your RMD just in that year is going to be over $250,000. So can you see how this building RMD is just going to create pain, maybe while you're younger, could be right after you go into retirement, maybe if you do Roth conversions there, you can come out with more money because you won't have these large RMD requirements down the road. Now, let me just interject something here that I find pretty interesting. They're talking about raising the RMD age to 75. Now, when we originally hear that, we think, oh, that's great. But let me tell you, for people that can afford to defer their withdrawals to 75, that just means their RMDs are going to be bigger and they're going to get bigger faster once they start. So I found that there are basically two kinds of people. There's the folks that will never really run into an RMD requirement. They're gonna go into retirement and they're gonna need the money out of their retirement plans and they're gonna start withdrawing. It doesn't matter what the RMD age is. They're, they're just not gonna run into that problem. And then there are those other folks that are going to run into the problem. So those are the folks that are going to be affected when they raise the RMD age. This is a trap. This is not, a, I mean, I don't think this was, Oh, we're, you know, we, we're, we're looking out for you. We're going to help you keep more money. That's not the way this is going to work out. So maybe prior to hitting RMD age, there was an opportunity to do Roth conversions and get that money out of there before it started to, before these withdrawals started to build and you come out with more money. Now, the second scenario that I want to talk about is a scenario that affects many, many, many people. So I want you to hear this. You do not have to have millions and millions of dollars to be affected by this. And this can be a big one. Most people don't see it coming. They don't plan for it. It's the tax on a surviving spouse. Mom and dad go into retirement. They've done well. They're deferring their retirement plans. Now dad dies, what happens? Mom usually keeps the assets, right? And now the RMDs come to her, but she's filing her taxes as a single taxpayer. And as you know, the tax rates for a single taxpayer are much higher than for a married couple. So here are the tax rates, married filing joint versus single. If you look all the way to the right here, 35% tax bracket for a married couple starts at well over $400,000 of income, right? For a single person, it starts at just over 
$200,000. And the same setup is in place for the 32% bracket, for the 24% bracket, the 22% bracket. The single taxpayer is always going to pay more tax than the married couple with the same amount of taxable income. So let's look at an example here. Now, the, the thing I want you to know about this example, I don't see this as an ultra high income type couple. I mean, I think they're doing okay, well, but here's how this might look. We have Adam and Ann, and they're targeting $100,000 of income after tax, right? After tax. So here's the deal. They each have $20,000 a year in social security and $68,000 a year in pension or IRA income and or IRA income. In that situation, federally, you lose about $8,600 in federal tax and you end up with the $100,000 after tax. And Adam and Ann are in a 12% tax bracket. Now, what if we rerun this without Adam? Adam's gone, Ann is filing as a single taxpayer. The difference is amazing. Now, here that is. If Ann wants to keep her same after-tax income, she will have to withdraw 43% more from the IRA because she is missing a social security check and she's paying almost $10,000 more in taxes. And she's in a 22% bracket. So if Ann is single for 10 years, that's $100,000 more tax than they had planned for. So maybe what Adam and Ann should do while they're both alive and in a lower tax bracket, maybe they should consider Roth conversions. So here you see the lower bracket situation, higher bracket situation, like we were talking about earlier. Now, when I'm talking to a couple sitting down in front of me, I, I, I want to make sure, first of all, that they're they're both there. Because the first reaction that Adam might have is, oh, well, Anne is just going to have to reduce her standard of living, right? And I get that. There probably are some expenses that can be cut because Adam's not around, but this is really going to change things because now Anne is filing as a single taxpayer and she just lost a social security check. So I just wanted you to see that this issue connects to folks that aren't multi multi-millionaires. This, this connects to average people going into retirement. And before we leave this, let me just say this. My dad died 20 years ago and my mom is still alive at 94. She has been filing as a single taxpayer for 20 years. So this is a big deal. And where am I going with this? I'm just saying that um, you know, if any one of these situation kind of connects with you, if you think, oh, I think, I think uh, this might be, um, I think this might affect me. Um, okay, we, you, you got to have some discussions here. Pl tax planning is always better done earlier rather than later. Talk to Dave, honestly. The last scenario, beneficiaries. Now, um, they just, recently changed the tax rules in terms of how a beneficiary typically can pay tax on inherited IRA money. It used to be that the tax could be paid throughout the life expectancy of the beneficiary. So for example, Carrie, age 45, gets a million dollars from mom. She doesn't need the money right now. She wants to save it for her retirement. And she certainly doesn't want to pay the tax on it. So prior to this law change, Carrie had 40 years to pay the tax on this money. Her first withdrawal would have been $26,000. 
and it would go up a little bit every year. 40 years later, she's done. Now, the current tax structure says that that inherited IRA account has to be empty by the end of the 10th year following the year of death. So if Carrie were to drain this account equally every year over 10 years, she would have to add $123,000 a year to her income tax return. That, that would make a difference, right? In fact, hear me on this. Let's say Carrie's taxable income was $70,000 a year. If she puts another $123,000 on top of that $70,000 for 10 years, she's going to lose well over $300,000 of that retirement plan just federally. So maybe um, before mom died or you know, before dad died too, while they were married, finally joint, they could have done Roth conversions, paid tax at a lower rate so that Carrie wouldn't lose over $300,000 on this retirement plan. So that's kind of what Roth conversion does. That's where we're going with this. All right. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here, Dave. So if we want to take questions now or talk about it in some way, be happy to do that. Uh, Dave, I can't hear you. There we go. Poor etiquette. Sorry about that. Um, while we're waiting on uh, some folks to possibly put some uh, some questions in, I know that was a, a pretty good overview. Um, one of the re we do a number of Roth conversions here. Most of them, however, are more of a backdoor Roth type of a situation. Can you address that and and when that might be a good opportunity for uh, for clients as well? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's um, that's a I know it's a, you're looking at more of the, the normal traditional Roths, but yeah, sure. Roth or something along those lines? So, so sometimes people make too much money to put money in a Roth IRA and they make too much money to deduct the contribution in a traditional IRA, right? So what folks can do in that situation, and, and Dave knows the rules around this, so we, we won't go through every, everything to be careful about. But what they could do is they could actually fund a traditional IRA that would be non-deductible and then do a Roth conversion. So since they have already paid the tax on this contribution, they might as well do a Roth conversion and grow it tax-free. So that's, that's kind of called a backdoor Roth. It doesn't conform to the stereotypical person who just contributes either to a deductible traditional IRA or to a Roth IRA. They make too much money to, to do either. So they contribute to a traditional IRA, non-deductible, and then convert it. And now they have a Roth. And that's a, that's a good strategy. And Dave is familiar with all the, you know, the bells and whistles that that carries with it. And it's a really good way to, uh, to get that Roth contribution in for the folks who can't do that because of an income limitation or something along those lines. Yeah. Um, I know we have a number of uh, opportunities for calculators and that sort of thing. So as I said in my introduction, there are a, a number of, of different um, variables here with, uh, with this. And, and you covered a number of different scenarios as well, um, Waldine with everything from beneficiaries, which I'm thinking about my mother, my, myself now, uh, when you, when you raise that and you know, she's in a 10% bracket and I'm in a, a 24 plus. And, and so I, something I'm considering for myself, I didn't even consider that for, uh, going in. We don't have any questions at this point in time. Let me just uh, hold this out to everyone. Uh, we're going to be sending the replay out to everyone as well. 
Um, I'm going, we have calculators that we can run to try and get an idea of what, you know, the tax savings might be for you over a period of time, as Waldine kind of pointed out here. It's not just about the taxes today or tomorrow, it's the taxes a year from now, two years from now, a generation from now that you need to be concerned with as you look, as you face this. And uh, with the run up in the markets that we've had, that is one question I would have, Waldine. Um, you know, we, we've seen this big run up. Um, is there a, a, a better opportunity to, uh, or a better time to do a conversion? So if, you, if you're in the middle of a bear, uh, a bear market, uh, would that be a better opportunity to, to do a conversion than, a, than, a, than in a bull market with, like we're in right now? Wait for a dip to, to be able to, to move a little bit more as it were? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. And the way I see that is um, we just don't know what's in front of us mm -hmm. from a market standpoint. So to, to not do it because we're hoping for a big correction can end up being a fool's game. I mean, look at the, look at the market that we've had for over 10 years now and who would have thought that during the coronavirus, we'd be reaching all time highs. I mean, you, you, you can always put your own feelings into this, but often feelings are wrong now. So that would be step number one. I, I, I don't know that you can time it that way, but step number two, you can always act based on what is happening. So if the market actually does take a big dip at some point, well, then you know that that's happening now. But to wait for it, that, that's a problem. And let me just digress and mention something that you mentioned. Another situation that we see a lot for Roth conversions and people are just not thinking, I, I wish they would, is when you have an older parent who is in their you know, 80s and just not real active anymore, They've got good medical coverage, but they're just not consuming a lot of income. Their house has been long paid off. They're, they're not traveling the world anymore. And, you know, only 85% of their social security is taxable or maybe even less than that and so on and so forth. Their tax rates are low. And you can see the writing on the wall that, they, that a fair amount of that IRA is gonna go to the kids. Roth conversions now can be done in large quantities without moving that bracket up significantly. And, and that's a good idea often. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a question here, uh, Walding. It says, can you roll over some, some pre-tax 401k to an IRA, then convert to a, back, well, to a backdoor Roth? I'm assuming it, call it backdoor Roth or conversion. And I'm not, I'm not sure whether this individual is working right now. So if they're still uh, you know, participating in their 401k or not. Yeah. They're so, working. So, yeah. So, so they're, if it's appropriate and, and talk to Dave about this, really, you want to talk to Dave about this. If it's appropriate, you can probably do an internal conversion in your 401k. So you can inside the 401k, now you have pre-tax money and you have Roth money. Or if you're over 59 and a half, you may be able to do a, 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 an in-service distribution, which means you're taking money right from the 401k, from the ERISA plan, moving it to an IRA, and then doing a Roth conversion in your IRA uh, structure. So really that 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 is a a, a great question uh, you you may have multiple options there so talk to dave about that to that individual i'm just going to say uh, i will email you when we're done uh, obviously again with the replay and, and whatnot let's get let's talk uh, offline on that and the um what we'd probably want to see is a copy of your uh, summary plan description for the 401k that you're in that would give us an idea of we could, if you can do that if you have Roth 401k uh, opportunities there, or if you're going to be eligible for the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, in-service distribution. In, in service, yeah, distribution. So 
and that's based on age and a couple of other factors, whether or not the plan allows it. So, but we can we can talk about that offline certainly. Okay. So, and, and I'm not seeing any other questions out here, Waldine. All right. Like I said, um, if anybody does have questions, you know, again, I'll be reaching out to everyone. Uh, if you, you feel free to reach out to me, if it's something I can't answer, or if you want some uh, some feedback from Waldine, I'm happy to reach out to him and uh, and get some information here as well. So. Thank you all very much for your time today. I hope you found this interesting and informative and um, we will be working uh, some of this out as we go along. Thank you very much, Waldine. Thank Appreciate you. You bet.